Hey Rosie Buds, welcome to my channel. Today we are talking all about sunscreens and what are the key things I look for when I'm purchasing sunscreen. Hi Rosie Buds, it's Shannon. Welcome to Rosie Scription. And we are finally starting to see signs of spring around us here in Pennsylvania in America. And I'm getting really excited, but I just saw my favorite sign of spring the other day. And that was a ginormous display of sunscreens at the store. I get really excited when I see that amount of sunscreen. Um, I wear sunscreen every day, and as I mentioned in my Why I Wear Sunscreen daily video, um, uh, any time of year is a good time to wear sunscreen. But these big displays get me excited because I can stock up, I can check out what's new, and it can be a little overwhelming for people looking at that big display as to, you know, what should you buy. So today's video, I want to cover what I look for in a sunscreen. I want to pose this with a little bit of a disclaimer. While sunscreen is considered technically an over-the-counter medication here in the US, and I am a pharmacist, that does not mean I'm an expert in skincare. We're actually taught um, very little about skincare in our pharmacy curriculum in school. Very basic stuff um, and very basics about the differences in sunscreens and what to advise patients. Some of the points I'm covering today are recommended by national dermatology organizations, skin cancer organizations, and some of the other points I'm going to cover are my personal preferences in selecting a sunscreen as a consumer with sensitive sunburn prone skin. So consider all that when you're um, listening to me today. The most important thing when you pick out a sunscreen and the best sunscreen for you is one that provides adequate protection and that you're going to wear every day. That's the key that you're going to want to apply and enjoy using every day. So at the end of the day, that's what you should be looking for. Um, so let's talk about what I look for in a sunscreen. When you have a combination product with SPF in it, you need to ask yourself two questions. Number one, am I going to apply enough of this product to get adequate sunscreen protection? And number two, am I going to reapply this product enough to get sunscreen protection throughout the day? So some products like makeup, my answer to both of those questions is no. I have similar concerns with insect repellent that also has SPF in it. The one product where sometimes combinations make sense is in a moisturizer. I tend to separate those out usually. So there are some days where I will just use my moisturizer SPF combination and I'll slap it on to cover both of those things and go out the door. But most days I do try to use separate products. When I'm looking at a sunscreen label, I always look at the SPF. So let's talk a little bit about what SPF is and what it means. So I'm going to get a little nerdy with you guys right now. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor, and the simplest way to think about this number is as a ratio. So it's the time it takes for your skin to burn with sunscreen over the time it takes to burn without sunscreen. So because I like easy math, let's imagine that it takes me 10 minutes without anything on my skin to burn. And when I wear a certain sunscreen, I don't burn for 150 minutes in ideal conditions. Well then that sunscreen has an SPF of 15. So it sounds like sunscreen may protect us for a long time given that analysis, right? So why are we advised to reapply it so often and so frequently? Well, it comes down to the fact that most consumers have been found to under-apply sunscreen. And SPF is studied under ideal conditions. It does not factor in environmental variables. For example, the UV index or strength of the sun's radiation, that can vary quite a bit throughout the day. Plus, SPF doesn't account for general wear. That protective coating can rub off with average daily activities. So how much SPF do we really need then? SPF is a logarithmic scale. An SPF of 15 is the minimum advocated by most medical organizations. And if you look at this chart, it appears that there might not be a big difference in the protection you get percentage-wise between 15, 30, and 50 SPF. So why is it that some expert organizations advise you using SPF between 30 and 50? Well, if you think about it this way, imagine how much light actually reaches our skin. Let's imagine that 100 light photons are beaming down on our skin. We're going to use 100 because again, I like easy math. So with no sunscreen, all 100 photons reach our skin. An SPF of 15 allows 7 photons through, while 30 lets in only 3. 
So you can see that is almost half of the amount versus the SPF of 15, and so on. Now while this overall difference may be small, it's still blocking more sun rays. So in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of experts out there, every little bit helps. It, this is really important considering the reality that studies show that most consumers underapply sunscreen. Higher SPF helps compensate for underapplication and all of those other variables I mentioned. So even though um, there's not a big difference between 30 and 50, I still lean towards the 50 when I can find it because I just um, I have very sensitive skin like I mentioned and also um, I just don't trust my application methods. Aside from SPF, I also like to make sure that my sunscreen is labeled broad spectrum. Broad spectrum means that the product provides proportional protection against the UVA and UVB spectrums. If you remember, UVB rays are shorter wavelengths and are responsible for sunburns. UVA rays are much longer and they go deeper into our skin. They're what cause tanning, and they're also a big factor in age-related changes like wrinkles, loss of collagen, and hyperpigmentation, those sunspots. I always remember that B is burn and UVA for A is aging. But to be honest, both wavelengths contribute to the big C, which is cancer. And I want protection against both UVA and UVB radiation for that reason, so I look for broad spectrum on my labels. In Europe and in Asia, they have other rating systems that are a little more specific. The other thing I think about when I'm selecting a sunscreen are the type of filters that are in the sunscreen. Is it a quote unquote chemical filter or physical filter? So let's talk about a few misnomers here. Chemical versus physical is a common way to describe the class of filters that are out there and these names were given in part due to their theorized mechanism of action. But there's a more descriptive label for these classes of sunscreens. Chemical filters should really be called organic filters because they're aromatic carbon-based compounds. And physical filters technically are best described as inorganic filters because they're mineral-based. But for the purposes of this talk, I will use chemical and physical labels since they're the common terms you may identify with. But these labels are misleading. It's commonly held that chemical filters work by absorbing light and physical filters work by reflecting and scattering light. But that's not entirely true. Some of these newer chemical filters have been shown to scatter light and physical filters actually work primarily by absorbing light. Because of their light reflecting properties, however, those physical filters can leave a pretty heavy white cast or a visible white film on our skin. Other differences to note include the fact that chemical filters are less photostable, they might break down in sunlight more than physical, and chemical filters may be slightly more irritating for people compared to physical filters. Here's a list of a bunch of UV filters. As you can see, there's only two physical filters, but there are a bunch of chemical filters out there. Some filters are not available for use or FDA approved yet in the US. These are marked with a star. Viewers living outside the US can hopefully find these newer filters or more stable filters in stores near you. And the other distinction to point out is that not all of these filters will protect us against UVA radiation. The ones that do provide UVA protection are now labeled in blue. Unfortunately, as you can see, we don't have a lot of options available for UVA protection here in the US. Only a few, and some of them have caveats. This is one reason I'm anxiously awaiting the approval of some of these newer filters here in the US. We definitely need more options. Physical filters or inorganic sunscreens are generally advocated by a lot of different experts out there that they're better for sensitive skin. And while they might be because they don't cause as many sensitivities or allergic reactions, I don't like them as much and I have sensitive skin. And the reasons I don't care for them are because I find the creams to be a little bit thicker. So to rub them in actually drags on my skin, which I find more irritating. They tend to pill up a little bit more on me and the creams tend to be thicker. Plus, it often has a heavy wipe cast, and I'm tempted to want to rub that in a little bit more, and I worry if I do that, I'll be rubbing off some of the sunscreen. So 
I do have sunscreens I like that are both chemical and physical filters or physical only or chemical only. I tend to lean towards the chemical filter sunscreens. I just find them more cosmetically elegant, easier to apply. They don't sting my face, which is good. If you have an interest in this topic, I encourage you to watch Michelle from Lab Muffin. She has a great video explaining the big differences and misconceptions about physical versus chemical filters. So I encourage you to watch that video. And I'll also leave a bunch of links in my blog post this week that will explain a little bit more if you have an interest. And the other thing to consider are, are there any added ingredients in there that might be potentially irritating? As someone with sensitive skin, this is something I really hone in on and look at. Um, things like alcohol, certain preservatives, um, fragrances, or other additives like um, some essential oils can be kind of irritating for some people. But ideally, if I can find a product that's fragrance-free, that is best. However, I have found some of my favorite sunscreens have added fragrance, so that's kind of a drawback. I'm still on the hunt for the perfect sunscreen. I haven't found one yet. The other thing I'm looking at when I look at a sunscreen is, is it water resistant? Now, waterproof is not possible in terms of a sunscreen, but there are um, different levels of water resistance. Generally speaking, I prefer a product that is water resistant. It's a sign to me that it's durable. Plus, with a toddler, I can't always predict how busy my day is going to get, especially on the weekends. So on the weekends, for sure, I reach for a water resistant formula. So this next point is kind of a big one in terms of people's compliance in using sunscreens, and that is the general overall feel and finish of the sunscreen. And the great thing about that huge wall of sunscreen that's at the stores these days is there's a lot of variety out there. There's gels, there's lotions, there's sprays, there's mousses, there's more thin liquidy sunscreens and thicker creams. Some have more matte finishes, some have more of a dewy, oily, let's face it, greasy finish. Some are tinted, some are clear. Sunscreen, you've come a long way, baby. And there's a lot of options out there now. And all of those things factor into what you prefer and what will work for your skins. Unfortunately, to find the right sunscreen for you with a finish you prefer, you may have to try a couple different kinds and that cost can add up. Uh, and that brings me to my final point, cost. Honestly, in my opinion, sunscreen should not cost you an arm and a leg. This is something you should be applying and reapplying on a liberal basis. It is not something that should be used sparingly because it costs too much. Sun protection is really important and if the only one you can use is really expensive and you can afford to purchase it on a regular basis, by all means, that's awesome. Keep doing that. But for me, I, um, I really worry that if I buy something really expensive, I'll use it sparingly and then I won't get the adequate coverage and then it's kind of defeated the whole purpose of using a sunscreen to begin with. So for me, I reach for drugstore cheaper options and really try to find one that works for me there. I have tried a couple more expensive ones and I have mixed opinions about them, but I do have quite a few sunscreens that I enjoy using and I would call it a sunscreen wardrobe. I use different sunscreens for different situations, different times of year, different days of the week. I will share with you and hopefully in a future video soon my sunscreen wardrobe and run through kind of my two cents about some of the brands I've tried. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more and catch more DIY topics, lifestyle topics, and other beauty skincare related topics, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you again for watching. Stay creative, take care of yourself, and I will see you soon, Rosie Buds. See you soon, Rosie Buds. See you soon. It would look really pretty there. Can you put it there? Okay, it will be really pretty. And now we're nice for now. So you will see some sun. So you will see some sun. Uh, I'm having trouble with alliteration today. A lot of trouble.